That was another real seminal moment in terms of, you know, we had the Video Music Awards, Michael Jackson, there was things that went along, but the Choose or Lose campaign, really, you know, we decided, well, let's go into politics. I mean, we were like, we've gone into reality programming, we've gone into animation with Beavis and Butthead, we've tried this, we tried that. What, el what else are young people interested in? We said, well, young people, they don't vote much, they're not interested. And then with the birth of the Clinton campaign, and, you know, a young candidate, and a lot of concern among young voters, we saw an opportunity to tap into that and see if we could take ourselves to yet another level. And we hired, we didn't know anything about the political world, so we, we hired some consultants to help us get plugged into people who knew that world, and uh, off we went. And it became, it was a huge success from a, from a business standpoint, because what it was able to do was to bring some advertisers in from the sidelines who just thought, no, that MTV is just a little too risque for me. It kind of mainstreamed us, in a way. Rock the Vote was a campaign we were into a little before that, okay. which was a public service campaign, the record industry, in response to this idea that uh, they were irresponsible. They started Rock the Vote to be a nonpartisan thing about freedom of speech. Uh, that was one of the impetuses of us to create uh, our own version <clears throat> that would be broader and would be bipartisan too, uh, called Choose or Lose. It got the attention of the kind of older politicians sitting in Washington who didn't even know how to plug a computer in, basically. Yeah, I mean, we saw, first of all, in that election, the amount of 18 to 24-year-olds who voted was up 20 percent. Big first time it really gone up in decades. Secondly, um, Clinton took full advantage of it. You know, you can remember he was on Arsenio Hall, but he was all over MTV. He did a lot of things. We repeatedly asked George Bush, through all these Republican consultants we had hired, please do stuff. And at the end, it was only at the very last two weeks before the campaign, he elected to do an interview with us. So Tabitha Soren, who had been sort of our heady, Stanford-educated uh, news correspondent, she went to interview... Um, Bill Clinton, I mean uh, George Bush, and on the, he, he, he made her do it on the tail of a train that was moving. So there was absolutely no, it would played so badly for him and actually hurt him more than it helped him with young people. It was like dismissing you young people, you know, it was just a patronizing. The idea in George H.W. Bush's mind that he would ever have to appear on MTV was a, such an anathema to him. But in the end he was, you know, sort of forced to do it, but did it in a half-hearted way.